So a long, long time ago, like back in March, I think, this beautiful boy, hold on, wait a minute, this beautiful bard-loving boy had a great idea for a bard subclass that makes magical creations out of paper. The subclass went through two iterations, and I'll leave both of those in the description, but after a while, Joe Cat decided to abandon the idea. Well, with the canning of that idea, the homebrew buzzards came to jump in and pick at the scraps of the now vulnerable idea. So what kind of content creator would jump in and take over someone's beloved homebrew and attempt to retrofit it to whatever they want? Well, I guess we're about to find out. Welcome to a scrap guide to D&D. I don't know how the song goes. I don't... So if you're a bard and you're tired of playing instruments all the time, the idea behind the College of Illustration is that you can trade off your guitar calluses for some carpal tunnel. By tapping into the weave of creation, you can bring your illustrations to life. Now, I wrote this big wall of text, all of which is going to be in the description, but in committing to stealing Joe Cat's bits and the theming behind the College of Illustration... I think it's only fair that I illustrate what the subclass can do. Oh god, I'm so bad at drawing. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> so at third level, you gain proficiency with tools that allow you to draw as well as medium armor and shields. Oh god, this is gonna be rough. The impersonation is bad. So the main feature is your paper object ability. As an action, you can expend one use of bardic inspiration to create anything you want that fits within a five-foot cube next to you. Its AC is 11, it's vulnerable to fire, and when you direct it as a bonus action, it can move 15 feet so long as you drew it in such a way that it can move. It's essentially treated like the Artillerist Artificer's Eldritch Cannon, except that it's bad because you can't use it to do damage, and damage is the only thing in this game that matters. Still, utility is power, and that's what this subclass is about. Although you can only have one at a time, you can use paper objects to create cover, distractions, or weaponry, which counts as magical for the purposes of everyone's favorite game mechanic, magical resistance. At 6th level, your paper gets thicker, and you can get that fun feature from Hexblade Warlock that allows you to use your charisma stat when wielding your paper weapons. Finally, at 14th level, your paper gets its ultimate thickness upgrade, adding a bonus to the AC and the size of your creations, and your magical creations can finally move fast and do damage. So go out there and hide behind your 10-foot thwomp friend. That's right, I'm using a JPEG instead of a drawing because it's still my show and I can do what I want. <coughs> okay, enough of the stupid deep voice having... But look, what I learned in creating this build is that most of the subclasses for Bard... Well, they really don't add that much to the class, only allowing subclass specialties at 3rd, 6th, and 14th level, which is the least of any class. I tried to stick with the trend of utilizing bardic inspiration in a creative way while, um, borrowing some useful features of other classes. With the upgrade to weaponry and armor and the diversity that paper objects provide, I think that this subclass has a lot in the way of utility without being too broken. Of course, please let me know if there's anything that you'd change in the comments, and feel free to adapt any part of this to whatever you think is appropriate. Lastly, I'll leave Joe Cat's channel in the description. Please do me a favor and go subscribe to him. That's all for today, so uh, make sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this in the future. I'll see you next time. And now you know how to play College of Illustration, you're welcome.